Hello and welcome to the Maker's Muse review of the Upbox, one of the biggest 3D printers we've ever reviewed on this channel. My first ever 3D printer was an Up Mini, and today we're going to be finding out if the Upbox is a worthy successor. So it's pretty clear from the outset that the Upbox is not a small 3D printer. It weighs 20 kilos and has a print volume of 255 by 205 by 205 high, which is quite substantial considering that the claim to fame of the up box is it can print ABS to that size with minimal to no warping. It has a heated bed and a single extruder which extrudes 1.75 millimeter filament in ABS or PLA plastic. You can print layers as low as 0.1 millimeters all the way up to 0.4. The nozzle diameter is 0.4 millimeters. So tier time is not new to making 3D printers. They've been making them for quite a long time. And the Upbox has a lot of improvements that many of the previous machines did not have. For a start, it has automatic nozzle height detection with a small metal plate, which the nozzle will touch off on to work out the height of the bed. It also now has automated bed leveling in which a little servo arm will drop a sensor down and touch off various points to do software bed leveling. Now this feature still has a fair ways to go, but I'll talk more about that later. You connect your upbox to your PC via a USB cable. There's no Wi-Fi or SD card capabilities with this machine. However, once you start printing, you can disconnect it from your PC and then walk away. So it's great to use a laptop to just connect it to the machine and then just walk off and let it print. A good improvement on the upbox versus the previous machines like the Up Plus 2 is now there's a few buttons on the side to do features like withdraw filament or extrude filament or restart the previous job. Although many machines now have integrated features like LCD screens, so this is really nothing special to be honest. One of the biggest issues with printers of this size is how they manage the bed. A lot of machines have a fixed bed which is fixed to the machine and you have to get a scraper and really attack it to get the parts off. It's always a contradiction in keeping parts stuck down during printing and then making them easy to remove after printing. So the UPS have a very unique system of having these sort of fiberglass boards which click into place and the Upbox has a very quite innovative system of keeping its much larger fiberglass boards in place with specially designed countersunk screws. Now this system works really well, it's a little bit finicky to get into place, you have to make sure there's no debris on the aluminium bed when you're putting them in, but once they're in they work flawlessly. So you have two options, you have the ones with the holes in it for doing raft prints and you now have a smooth bed for doing raftless prints which is quite a new concept for UPS and they work quite well. Many people over the years have been quite worried about the health and safety aspects of 3D printing, so Tier Time has taken this into account and built a HEPA filter into the up box, which takes care of most of the 3D printing fumes and cuts down any of the possible toxic fumes that it might be emitting. This filter is replaceable and it's recommended to replace it after a certain number of hours of printing. There's also other safety features as well. For example, the door has a sensor, so when it opens up, the machine will automatically pause. This is good if you're running a school environment where a kid might open it up and try to stick their hand in, the machine will stop moving, although the features inside will still be hot. I feel this feature has good intentions but is slightly poorly thought out because, for example, you can still open the top with no consequence, there's no sensor here. Also, I believe some kind of lock like the Robox has would be really cool in a school environment to stop kids actually physically getting into the machine at all. Now onto the things about the up box that I don't really like. In terms of its print volume, it's a very respectable large print volume for printing ABS parts. Then, with that in mind, why in the world do they put a 500 gram spool holder into the side of the machine? 500 grams of material isn't going to get you very far, and to top it off, there is no filament sensor when you buy the machine. So if the filament runs out, it will just keep printing and you'll eventually run out of filament and just be printing air. Now the community has already come up with a solution for this where you can rewire the door sensor to your filament so the machine will pause when you run out of filament. So that solves that problem which is awesome but it should have been there from the start um, and I'm sure future generations will incorporate that feature but in my opinion 500 gram spools on a machine of this size just doesn't make much sense. In terms of the software that you use with the UP, the UP slicing software is one of the easiest to use on the market by far, although there is a few limitations. The UP machines and the software are completely proprietary, which means you can't use Simplify 3D or Cura or any other slicer on the market. You must use their software. And although it works very well, and the support material in your prints pulls away flawlessly and it's had that advantage for many years, it's now starting to lag behind 
some of the more powerful slicing engines like Simplify 3D. For example, there's no G-code preview in the UP software, which is really quite necessary for very complicated prints if you want to know where your support material is going to be. And also, it's very important to note that you cannot change your temperatures in the UP slicing software. You have an ABS and PLA preset, and that's it. And it's important to note that the ABS preset is around 270 or 260 degrees, which is actually too hot for aftermarket filaments. So a lot of people that end up buying UPS complain about the quality they get when they're printing with cheap aftermarket ABS. But in fact, it's because it's extruding at too high a temperature. The UP plastics which are designed to print with the UPS are designed to print at that high temperature and they print very well. So this is something to keep in mind with the UPS. They're designed to do one thing extremely well. They print ABS better than most other printers on the market. But by doing so, they are slightly locked down. Now there are ways to get around it and make, force the machine to be tricked into extruding at a lower temperature. But if you're a school environment, I would recommend just sticking with the ABS that comes from UP. It's more expensive, but it's definitely higher quality than most of the other plastic on the market. So I feel it's important to note the issues I had with the automatic bed leveling sensor. So when it ran the sensor routine, it chose a level height which was way too close to the nozzle. So what that resulted in was very high back pressures when it was laying down its first few layers of filament. What this does is it overheats the extruder motor and then causes the filament to be chewed out and stop extruding in the extruder head. And you end up with prints like this, where it prints okay for a while and then just stops and it seems to be for no reason. So what I did is I manually changed the first layer height to be a little bit further away. And what I did is greatly reduce that back pressure and I haven't had any issues since. But with that problem out of the way, it was just happy printing. This machine is literally like the bigger up mini I've always wanted. So I went and did my mini new pots test and this printed flawlessly. It was a very long print. It had support materials all around the fins and they broke away with, by hand with no issues at all. And this is something that you just can't get off many 3D printers, reliable printing in ABS plastic. And similarly, I gave it almost a torture test by printing out this Mason Knight from Chivalry. This print went for over 12 hours and was probably half of it was support material. And then I went to town and spent about 10 minutes removing it to find the print underneath. Now, I say this is a pretty much a torture test because the file has errors for a start and it's extremely detailed and extremely hard to print and the up pulled it off flawlessly. So what I'm gonna do now is address one of the questions that's gonna be asked in the comments section, no doubt. How does the up box compare to the Cubicon single? Well, let me break it down. At face value, they look very similar. They have a similar look, an enclosed build chamber. They have similar build volumes. They both have a single extruder running 1.75 mil filament and they both have HEPA filters. However, there's some significant differences. The up box has software bed leveling, whereas the Cubicon single has hardware bed leveling, where it actually has a motor in the bed to level it. This is a very complicated method, but it means it's very easy and user friendly if it works. Whereas with software, it's not as elegant, but it works quite well. And it's a little bit more bulletproof. The up box also only has a passively heated build chamber in terms of the bed heats up, but the chamber is only heated by that bed emitting its heat to the chamber. The Cubicon single has an actively heated build chamber where the build chamber's temperature is actually monitored by the machine. This means a more reliable printing environment and possibly better warp free prints. However, here's the catch. The Cubicon single is more than a thousand dollars more than the up box in Australian money. And that's a lot of money. You can buy a lot of tools for a thousand dollars. So if you're happy to do a few tweaks by hand, you can pretty much bring the up box up to the same level as the Cubicon. And also there's less things going on in the up box. It's a mechanically more simple design, which means there's less stuff to go wrong. So in terms of where I see the up box working well would be in a school environment where the teacher takes files from the students and batches them into a single print and then runs them overnight on a single machine. I can see it working very, very well in that situation. I can also see it working well in small engineering firms because the up box prints very well in ABS, which is what you need for decent engineering prototypes. 
I can also see the Artbox being a very desirable 3D printer for power users at home who are looking to get into 3D printing and have a massive head start in terms of printing quality and reliability. It's definitely not a cheap printer. This is the higher end of the consumer level 3D printers. Beyond this, and beyond the Cubicon, you start to end up in Stratus's territory where you start spending several hundreds of thousands of dollars on very large 3D printers. So yes, you can get a 3D printer for $500, but you're not gonna be able to print ABS parts at the size that this machine can do out of the box. And that's why it's worth the money. So that's the Up Box. Overall, an extremely impressive machine. It's definitely like a larger Up Mini, in my opinion. My only pet peeve is the fact that it runs 500 gram spools and you need to run bigger spools external to the machine. But apart from that, it's a great printer. It's extremely sexy, and I'm very glad to have one at my disposal for the moment. If you enjoyed this review and want to see more 3D printing content on Maker's Muse, don't forget to subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And I'll see you again very shortly. Catch you later.